Hi guys, hope you are doing great. In this video, I want to talk about very important topic in JavaScript that is promises and async await. It's about how we structure and how well we can write our code. So in this video, I want to talk about promises. Then I will convert those usage of promises into async await and then I will compare both ways of writing code. So I have opened up VS code and uh, in this file, uh, I'm using actually node command. You can also write the same code in JavaScript by including that in HTML file, but I'm not going to create HTML file. So I'm directly going to run the script using node command. Okay. So in this file, first of all, I want to talk about promises. I have already created a video about callbacks and promises. If you want to look into that, uh, check the link in description below. So I want to first create a function that is going to return the promise so let's create a function so i want to create const and uh, i want to write calculate and i want to give it three values and now it's going to return promise i'm going to use the built-in promise class given by javascript that we can use to uh, create promise and return it from within a function. So I'm going to write return statement new promise and it takes two parameters reject and resolve and uh, inside it we can wait uh, until we want. Uh, usually we call the API and it takes time but uh, i'm not gonna use any kind of api instead i'm gonna be waiting using set timeout function so set timeout and uh, when this promise is going to return the value i want to wait it for one second this is thousand milliseconds okay so from inside rather than actually using the return statement i'm gonna use these two parameters uh to actually return the data reject is used for if there is an error resolve is used for if there is no error and return the data or message so i'm gonna write resolve and uh, i'm gonna write a plus b plus c okay and this is a function that is going to return the promise usually what happen is uh, you use a function built-in function given by mongoose like we have find one find all uh, find by id and update find by id and delete these kinds of functions and a lot of other functions that you need to use and to manage the promises in this video uh, using promises and async i will show you how we can use those promises in a better way using promises and much better way using async await okay so now i want to call this function and uh, use the promises syntax to actually uh, calculate these values add the uh, addition of these values okay so i want to call it add and uh, now uh, it's like calculate and uh, i want to pass it three values and how we can actually uh, wait until it returns something we can use dot then statement and inside it it will receive a parameter let's say addition okay and this variable is going to take uh, the values so inside it i'm going to log it console.log and uh, i want to print addition okay so i'm going to use the vs code terminal to actually run it so i'm going to write node async await and it's going to wait for one second and you can see that it has printed six so it waited for one second and uh, uh, it returned uh, the value from here and it has printed over here okay so now what if we want to use this reject keyword reject keyword is used if there is an error let's say that uh, i want to check if a plus b uh, we can have anything we, we can't actually have the practical example that what can be the error over here but let's say that i want to have if a is less than zero 
or b is less than 0 or c is less than 0 so in short i don't want to have any negative value to be passed to this calculate function so if there is an error i want to return reject and i want to return a message so no number can be negative okay otherwise uh, i would just want to this uh, resolve statement so i want to just return from here okay so let's say that i want to pass minus one and let's run this script and here uh, you you will see that it has thrown me an error but we don't have any handler to actually detect the error so in order to handle that error that is returned from promise we can use a catch function okay so catch e and inside it i want to print e okay so now rerun this script and now you can see that it has printed a message that no number can be negative so this is how we can handle these errors we can also use try catch uh, but uh, this is a short way to actually handle the errors okay so now uh, let's say that uh, i want to create more than one promise chainings and this concept is called promise chaining so i want to call another function that is going to receive the value return from this first promise okay so i'm going to just hit enter from here and uh, let's say that i want to call this function again and again and again uh, rather than actually calling the second function that will return the promise so i want to use this dot then and it's going to receive the value that is returned from first promise okay so you can uh, assume that this dot then is expecting uh, a new promise to be returned from the previous promise so i need to return a promise from this first promise body so i can call return and i can use calculate and for the first value uh, i'm going to actually pass the result that is returned from this promise so i want to pass addition and then i will pass four and five so addition will receive uh, i think six yeah it is six plus four plus five so it will become 15. so now uh, i want to receive that particular result over here and uh, i want to log this result okay let me just bring it back calculate okay so let me run the script so now you can see that it waited for one second and printed six then it waited for another one second and printed 15. so every time this function is going to be called it's going to wait for one second because we have used set timeout and uh, it has printed these two values okay and this return statement is must so this is called promise chaining and uh, we can actually have it for any number of times we can have it for 10 times 100 times uh, as much as we want so this is the promises now this function is returning promise now i want to use async await and compare that code uh, to actually uh, see that how good looking async await can be and how cleaner it can look like okay so i would keep this function as it is because i want to use it uh, and uh, i'm going to comment this code okay and i'm going to implement the same functionality using async await so what is async await first of all let's say that uh, I want to create a variable and uh, I want to create a function that add equals to this okay I want to comment it for now as well I want to explain few things 
So I want to actually log the something that is returned from this add function. So right now nothing is being returned. So just for experiment, let's say what does it print? So I'm going to run this script and you can see that it has returned undefined. Okay. So now one keyword I want to use that is async. I want to talk about await later on. So I want to write async over here. Okay. Now let's run the script again. Now you can see that it has printed undefined, but with the promise keyword. So it means that async behind the scene uh, behave like a promise. So it is expecting something promised to be returned from within this function. Okay. So uh, what I can do now is uh, I can actually uh, create a new promise from within this function or I can use any function that is uh, implementing the promise from within that function. Okay. So I'm going to uncomment it again. So I'm going to call this function again because this function is returning the promise. So async await work like a promise behind the scene in a short sense. Okay. So I want to call calculate and I want to pass it one, two, three. Okay. And let's say I want to return something from here. Let's print it out and you can see that it has shown me a message that prom is pending. A pending means that uh, async actually this return statement returned something returned a value before the async could wait. Async want somebody that is that we can call a wait to actually notify this keyword that something has been calculated and you need to wait for that much time. Okay. So I just want to add a keyword await. Okay. So let me run the script and now you can see that it has printed promise again. Okay. So what I can do is I can actually use these then statements. Okay. And uh, I can actually detect that how we, we can actually calculate and return these statements from within these functions. So first of all, I'm going to store this value within a variable. I'm going to implement the same thing over here. Okay. So const sum one equals to await. Okay. Now this someone is just like this result. Okay. So, but I want to pass this result again. Uh, this sum is like this addition. So I want to pass this addition to this calculate function again, and I want to receive it uh, in another variable, just like we are receiving it in result. So const sum to await calculate and now sum one four five. Okay. And uh, now I want to return sum two. Okay, fine. So we can call it as much time as we want. Now, rather than logging out like here, I want to just call this add function. And uh, I will write then value console.log value. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, I want to detect the error. So just like I did it over here, I just want to add it over here as well. So E equals to console.log E. Okay. So now let's run our code. It should print the same kinds of messages that we received through this code. So let's run it now. So now you can see that uh, it has printed out 15 because we are not logging out any value from 
uh, we are not logging out someone that uh, was returned from this calculate function so i'm gonna copy it as much time as uh, i want so let me just copy these two lines some three some four and uh, i can just write some two some three six seven i just want to increment the values eight nine okay now i'm gonna return some four okay so let me just run it and it's gonna wait for four seconds because calculate function is being called four times so it's gonna wait for four seconds so now it has returned 45 after calculation of all these things so now you can see that how good looking it is as compared to the promises it is actually using promises behind the scene but uh, uh, it's not recommended nowadays nowadays people prefer using async await because it's more good looking more cleaner and if we need to add more much more promise chaining rather than using then and cache then cache and return statements a lot of times uh, you can see that we don't have to add a return statement each and every time from within the then function uh, we we just need to uh, write the await keyword and it's going to uh, manage everything okay so this is called async await chaining uh, and it is more cleaner so it's up to you how you want to use promises and uh, uh, like async await sometimes i do need to use callbacks callbacks is uh, first uh, it should be a first choice for a simplest requirement but if you have a bit complex requirement for more than one api calls that needs to wait for a few seconds you can actually uh, use the promises but for cleaner code for more good looking code you need to use async await it's more uh, uh more looking good looking and uh, it's recommended nowadays in the market and the industry okay so hope you have liked my video make sure you subscribe my channel hit the like button and comment below if you have any question thanks for watching